Our presenter for the 11 o'clock time slot is Isaac Thomas. He is from Zionsville, Indiana, and will be sharing with us his capstone project, an electric motorcycle concept for EMOV. Please join us in welcoming him. All right, thank you all for joining today. My name is Isaac Thomas, and I'm going to be sharing my capstone project with you, which is an electric motorcycle concept for the brand EMOV. So first off, I want to talk a little bit about the brand, um, share a little bit about who they are and some of the values they hold, as well as the current products that they have on the market. So EMOV are pioneers in electric mobility. They've been designing and manufacturing electric bicycles since 2009. Um, what they believe in is the future of electric mobility, and they're always working to develop cutting edge concepts and innovative solutions to create a new holistic approach to transportation. So that brings me to the current product they have on the market, which is the Brina 2 e-bike. So this bicycle was something that I really used for my main source of inspiration as I was going forward with developing a motorcycle concept for the brand. So just some key things I wanted to point out about this bicycle. First off, the branding and color accent. As you can see here, they have their logo right there on the side of the bicycle, as well as these nice blue color accents to accent the body lines. And then in terms of material, um, EMOV really did a lot of exploration with carbon fiber and how they could implement that, having one solid body component to house the battery and to compose the frame of the bicycle. And then just in terms of their overall brand language and style, they have kind of a mixture of these organic curves with more geometric components. So these were the main things that I wanted to bring with me into a motorcycle concept for the brand. So before I really dug into this project, I had to ask myself some questions. First off, how might I push the brand language of EMOV into the near future? How might I explore where the electric vehicle market is going for motorcycles? What safety features might I include to protect the rider? What materials should I use? And then what style of motorcycle is going to best fit with the EMOV brand? So just to walk you through kind of the process, I started off with a lot of research, um, took what I'd learned from that research into my ideation phase, once I had refined the ideation, I went into the final vision for this project. So the research. The first thing I did was come up with a competitive set to really learn what electric motorcycles are there on the market right now and what am I going up against. So first off, on the left, we have the Cake Kalk. This is almost like a dirt bike style of e-motorcycle. Um, it is street legal. Some things about this bike, it has an 83 mile range, a top speed of 56 miles an hour. It weighs 174 pounds and has a very low charge time at only two and a half hours. So some of the pros for this bike, it is very lightweight, which would make it good for city use. The cons though, at only a top speed of 56, it's really not gonna be able to be used on most highways. So it is somewhat limiting in terms of where you're able to actually ride this motorcycle. Next up, we have the Zero SR. Um, this motorcycle has a much better range of 223 miles an hour, or 223 miles rather, and a top speed of 102 miles an hour. It weighs a lot, um, a lot more at 458 pounds, um, and then it has a much larger charge time of 10 hours. So some pros for this, it does have much better range and it is a lot faster. However, it is a lot heavier and does have that slower charge time. And then finally, my favorite of the three uh, motorcycles here is the Tar Form. So this motorcycle has a 90 mile range, a top speed of 95 miles an hour, and weighs 350 pounds. So it's a good middle ground between the two previous bikes. It does have a kind of middle ground charge time at four hours. Um, some pros that I really like about this bike, it has a good top speed. And then in terms of styling, I think it really stands out above the rest as being somewhat of a modern cafe racer style, which I'll explain in greater detail later on. So after I had found this competitive set, I asked myself, what things do I want to include on a motorcycle for EMOV? So firstly, a motorcycle capable of highway speeds for those longer commutes. I wanted something that's gonna have enough range that it's gonna be a reasonable alternative to a gas powered motorcycle. And I also wanted to explore ways that I could make charging this motorcycle more convenient. I also wanted some improved handling that's going to allow for a comfortable ride in any scenario. And then finally, I really wanted to explore some different safety features that are going to protect the rider. So to get into some of those technologies I wanted to explore, firstly, the modular battery system. So right now there's really only one electric motorcycle that has a modular battery system. Um, most other ones rely on a traditional charging station. So what I wanted to do was explore how I could make this a more convenient process for the user. Um, Cause right now you're either limited to charging it at your house or if you are driving this motorcycle to work, then you have to find a charging station 
somewhere that you're able to charge your motorcycle, which might not be even anywhere close to where you actually work. So if with a modular battery system, having the option to remove the battery completely from the bike, take it with you to wherever you are and charge it is going to really open up new ways to um, improve the riding experience. And then another technology that I really wanted to explore um, is actually not a new technology. It's been around for almost 150 years and it's called hub center steering. So you have two images here. On the left, you're gonna see a more traditional motorcycle um, with that front suspension fork going from the handlebars straight down to the front tire. And then on the right, you're gonna see a motorcycle that has hub center steering. So you'll notice that it does not have those suspension forks going from the, um, the handlebars down to the front wheel. So the advantages of a system like this is it eliminates the forward pitch caused when you're braking a motorcycle. Um, traditionally, when you're riding a motorcycle, one of the most dangerous things is if you have to come to a very quick stop, you, can, uh, you run the risk of potentially flying over the front of the handlebars because all those forces are rotating around the front wheel. Um, so this system separates the brake, steering, and suspension forces into three separate things. And it also opens up some very interesting stylistic um, opportunities because you can have this floating look for the front wheel. So here's just a very simple graphic to kind of explain that in greater detail. So on the left, you'll see a traditional steering system. In red there, it would be the suspension forks going down. And you'll notice that red arrow pointing out how those forces when you're braking are going to kind of rotate and want the bike to almost flip over the front wheel. However, with the hub center steering system, the forces are first gonna go back towards the rear wheel and then up, which really um, improves both the handling but also the safety of braking on a motorcycle. Next, I wanted to explore the advantages and the disadvantages of having an electric motor. So right off the bat, one of the best things about an electric motor compared to a gasoline engine is the, it has very much less maintenance um, in terms of what you're going to have to be working on to maintain this motorcycle. Another great thing about an electric motor is a lot of power can be delivered from a much smaller source. Um, it also opens up a lot of different options for design because you're able to kind of move the motor around as opposed to having it traditionally located right between the wheels. It also can negate the need for a traditional chain and gear system because there are other options for how you're going to drive that rear wheel. One of the dangers though with an electric um, motor is you don't have that engine noise that has traditionally um, been very helpful if you're on a motorcycle for warning other cars that you're there. Obviously motorcycles are much more dangerous than a traditional car. Um, so having that lack of engine noise is gonna be an added danger that I really wanted to explore some ways of how I could help solve that problem. The next thing I had to ask myself was what style of motorcycle is best going to fit within the EMOV brand? So just to kind of go over some different styles of motorcycles here. First off, the cafe racer style. This is more of a retro um, style of motorcycle. It's very lightweight and has been built to be optimized for speed and handling. In the middle there, you have the traditional sports bike, such as a Kawasaki Ninja. Um, these motorcycles are built for fast acceleration. They're very optimized for speed and cornering and just overall performance. On the right, you're gonna have a touring motorcycle, which is specifically designed to tour and go on longer rides. Usually these are gonna offer saddlebags and are traditionally a lot more comfortable so that you're not, um, you're able to go on those longer rides. And then you have a combination sports tour. So what this does is it takes the performance of a sports bike with the range and comfortability of a tour bike and combines them into one motorcycle um, to give you the best of both worlds. And then on the right there, you have an adventure bike. This is almost like a dirt bike, but it's still street legal, um, something that's going to be on and off-road capable and is gonna be a lot more comfortable for those longer range rides, but also give you the confidence to take it off-road and explore. So the style I really wanted to try to um, give Ema for this was something of a cross between a cafe racer and a sports bike and really kind of push these styles to the limits and see what is possible with them. And then the last thing I needed to do was to define my user needs. So I came up with some different user personas. Here's the first one, Tyler. He's a 26 year old who lives in the city. He loves exploring downtown and riding his bike. He usually rides his bike to work, but he's looking for something new, something fresh, um, a clean source of personal transportation. He doesn't want a gas, um, gas powered motorcycle because he doesn't want to add any more pollution to the city but he'd love to have an electric motorcycle that's gonna be completely clean, but also gonna allow him to explore outside the city as well. He's also looking for an easier way to charge the batteries because he knows that there just aren't that many great options for charging for electric vehicles around the city in place. Next up, we have Matt, who is your traditional motorcycle enthusiast. He loves the retro style of the cafe racers. 
but he's always looking for ways to learn more about the new technologies that are constantly evolving with motorcycles. And that seems to be going towards the electric vehicle market. So he would love to see somewhat of a modern style of a cafe racer, but something that really stands out and breaks away from the rest of the pack. Um, so he wants something that's going to be fast enough to give him the thrill of a gasoline powered motorcycle. But he also knows the risks involved with riding a motorcycle. So I really want some good safety features that are going to give him peace of mind when he's riding this. So that brings me to my ideation phase. I probably drew over 500 different motorcycles for this project. I'm just exploring tons and tons of concepts, but I'm only going to show you some here. So here's some of the very early sketches I did with just a simple Sharpie. I'm um, just very loose, rough sketches to kind of figure out proportion and understand how the different components interact with each other on the motorcycle. And then here's a little bit more of a refined um, ideation page where I was exploring some very organic curves and how I could kind of give the overall form of the motorcycle something unique. And that leads me to the refinement. So in my refining stage, it was kind of a mixture of sketching and CAD going back and forth between the two to develop what became my final concept. So here you can see the final sketches, the front side and top view of the motorcycle. And just to talk a little bit about the rider position for this bike. So with the traditional cafe racer style, you're going to be seated almost completely upright. Um, they're really meant for more cruising. But with a sports bike, you're going to be leaned over almost um, parallel to the ground. So I wanted to give something kind of in the middle where you're going to be comfortable for those longer rides, but you still have that slight forward lean to give you that sporty feeling. And that's going to bring me to my final vision for this project. So just to point out some of the features on this motorcycle, in the front here, you're going to have dual disc brakes to really give you a good stopping force in the front. You're going to have the headlights right there in the front as well. And then for the main body components, I really wanted to bring that carbon fiber forward um, as EMOB currently uses on their Brina 2 e-bike. So that was one of the key things I wanted to bring. You're going to have a nice suspension right there in the middle to give you a comfortable ride, a nice big rear tail light to make sure cars are going to be able to see you. And then I ended up putting the electric motor inside of the rear wheel, which I'll explain in just a minute. And you can't see it on this slide, but the modular batteries are going to be located in that lower portion of the motorcycle. So talking about the motor placement. Since I am using an electric motor for this motorcycle, I really wanted to explore some different ways to of where I could put this motor. So I decided to put it in the actual center hub of the rear wheel and then have this outer ring that's going to act like a bearing that the tire would then spin around. So this allows you to get direct power straight from the motor to the wheel without having any sort of chain system. Um, and it's really going to give you that quick acceleration that you're looking for in an electric motorcycle and that top speed that you really want. Taking a look at the modular battery system here, as you can see, there's these two large batteries that are going to slide out of the bottom. They would obviously be locked into place um, when you're riding, but if you wanted to remove them to fit them easily into a backpack, carry them with you into work or into your home to charge, you have that option, as well as being able to use a traditional charging station and just leaving the batteries in the bike. So just to go over a few of the safety features I wanted to explore, um, I really wanted to bring those accent colors of the EMOV brand into this motorcycle with the accent lines on the top of the motorcycle here. Um, but what I did was I actually made them illuminate as well as the logo there so that when you're out riding at night, you have more than just your headlight and taillight to alert cars of your presence just because you don't have that added engine noise. So I needed some other way to indicate that you are on the road. And then since this is an electric motorcycle, you are going to have that instant torque from that electric motor. So I wanted to make sure that the seat cushion was both comfortable, but also very grippy so that you're not going to be worried about sliding off the back of the seat when you hit the throttle um, very quickly. Here's just another detail shot of that illuminated logo on the side there. And then the Brina 2 e-bike that Emov currently sells comes in a white color option. So I thought I'd explore what that might look like if they chose to move forward with something like this concept. So just to talk about how I feel that I met the needs, I feel like I created a motorcycle that really pushes the brand language of Emov. This isn't something that you can see out on the road right now. It's very unique stylistically. Um, I also feel like I created a motorcycle that meets the needs of the users by addressing their main concerns. I explored different safety options with the illuminated logo and accent lines, and then some different technologies such as the hub center steering that are going to create that better overall riding experience. And then I also explored better options for charging with that modular battery system. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, please text the number on the screen and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Um, first question. 
Would the position your design puts the user in cause discomfort in their back while on long trips? Um, I tried to make it as comfortable as possible with the style of the bike that it is. Um, so I think that forward lean is something that really you're going to want on a longer trip because if you're forced to sit straight up for a very long time, your back will get a lot more tired. So kind of having a nice comfortable forward lean where you're really grounded in the seat, it shouldn't really create too much of a problem. Okay. Uh, recent grad Priscilla says, well done tying into the brand language at EMOV. What was it like working with an existing company and was there much feedback and interaction with them? Yeah. So it was actually them that pitched this project idea originally. And I just kind of took with it, took it and ran with it. Um, due to all the Corona stuff going on, obviously the um, amount of contact between us has kind of dropped over the last couple of months, just as it became a lot more difficult and they were going through a move to California. So all these kind of things added to that. So they haven't actually seen the final concept yet, but it was great to work with them at the beginning to kind of get the initial um, ideas out and kind of brief for the project. With that, do you have an idea of their timeline for this project? Um, this project was definitely more of a conceptual one for them. Um, I think they had also offered a project that was going to be like a second iteration of their current e-bike. Um, I chose to do this concept instead. So I really don't have any idea of what the timeline would be. If I had to guess, I would say probably five to 10 years, something like that. Okay. How many models did you create in CAD? Oh man. Um, <laughs> I think I, this is probably the fourth or fifth model that I, that I came up with. Obviously there was a lot of back and forth with my ideation and I just got to certain points with models where nothing was working. So I had to just start over. So that was definitely one of the uh, struggles for this project, but I really like how it turned out overall. Yeah. A lot of the <coughs> uh, texts I'm receiving are saying the model looks great. The renderings look great. Uh, beautiful bike. Um, one question, is it possible for an electric bike to supercharge like an EV car? car would hmm. honestly i don't know enough about that technology to really be able to answer that i'm sure i'm obviously not an engineer but i'm sure there's some way you could work that out i know you can't have a supercharged um traditional motorcycle so i'm sure there's some way you could work that out yeah any guess on the weight of the bike um i'm not 100 percent sure um, um given that it is carbon fiber though it would be much lighter if i had to guess I would probably put it in between 300 and 400 pounds. Um, so not really extremely heavy, but also it's, it's a little bit of a bigger bike. So it's not going to be um, anything less than 300 would be my guess. Okay. In, and in the event of a crash, how do you think this bike might compare to others in terms of safety? Um, well, I tried to give it the best like possible handling and braking that I could. Um, but obviously really when you're in a crash on any motorcycle, it's probably not going to end well, um, but I try to give it the best stopping of capabilities, the best um, handling, that way you could avoid those scenarios as to the best of your abilities. To possibly avoid some crashes, uh, one person has mentioned that some electric cars play fake electric noises. Would you consider doing this with the bike? I did actually consider that, and I think that's definitely something that would be probably a viable option for this. Um, just to have that added noise so that people are a little bit more aware of your presence on the road. It's definitely not a bad idea. And judging from similar models of uh, batteries on, uh, on other electric bikes, do you have an idea of what the battery life of these batteries might be? Yeah, so I would probably put these at around... Um, in terms of miles, uh, probably around 200 miles. Obviously there is a lot of other um, extra room on this bike that they could definitely be bigger. And that's something I wanted to explore. I just didn't have time to create a model of potentially having like a bigger battery option for this or various like um, different um, capacity options for this motorcycle. So, but if I had to guess with the size of these batteries, I think I somewhat calculated it to be around like um, 200 miles of range. Did they provide the dimensions for you? For these batteries? Uh, no. So this is um, something I kind of took some existing batteries that I was able to find and tweak them a little bit. So they're not um, exactly perfect to what EMOF currently uses because their um, bicycle is so designed around the shape of the battery where it's housed in that inner body piece. Um, so I was not provided any specific dimensions for those. Um, someone says uh, the 
design is sleek and very well done. And then they go on to suggest that you create a superhero who drives one of these. <laughs> Might have to do that. Uh, I could definitely see a superhero driving one of these. Let's see, any other questions? And I can't remember, you might have mentioned this. Uh, EMOF has not seen this yet? No, I'm going to send them over kind of my final, uh, my current iteration of the project and see what they think, but I have not done that yet. Okay, all right. Excellent, good work. Well, everyone, uh, if you would join me in congratulating Isaac, Job well done, Isaac. Great job. Thank you.